Regenerative braking is a key feature of Formula E. It allows the drivers to maximise the energy they've got available to them. So we're going to pull it apart, see how it works, and see how it could transform the effectiveness of the cars that we all drive on the road. So Antonio, regenerative braking, why is that so crucial to you in your Formula E car? So here in Formula E, it's, it's the only way that we can actually recover energy throughout the lap um, is, is through the brakes. And so, you know, this has a lot of additions and downsides to the drivability of the car as well. On a typical street circuit that we go to in Formula E, how much energy can you actually recover and put back into the battery? So basically, if we do a lap flat out, our consumption that lap in, in terms of kilowatts is roughly 1.8, 1.9 in this track. Our consumption per lap, it needs to be like 1.2, so we need to save like 0.6, so that's how much we target to recuperate each lap. If the consumption of the lap had to be 1.0, then we'd find a way to recuperate a bit more, but obviously this all goes against lap time. So the more you need to regen and to recuperate, the, the bigger loss in lap time. The key to regenerative braking is that it requires an electric motor, which actually doubles up as a generator. The motor works by creating a fluctuating electric current in the copper wires of the stator, which causes the magnet-covered rotor at its center to spin, the rotor then turns the wheels and the car accelerates. But if this process is reversed and we actually allow the wheels of the car to turn the rotor, we can generate electricity and recharge the battery. And this is the clever bit. The momentum of the car continues to turn the rotor, but it induces a reversed electrical current and this flows into the battery, charging it up. With different electromagnetic forces in the motor, however, instead of driving the car forward, the regenerative process actually slows the car down. Physically, inside the car, what are you doing? Are you just stamping on the brake pedal or is there more to it than that? Ideally, for lap time, you just be flat out and brake uh, before a corner. But this, in Formula E, is not the case. We have to do a lot of lift and coast. So before the braking, we lift and let the car sail for a little bit. And then when we brake, we obviously regenerate. We can tune how much regen we want when we come off the throttle. It's like an engine braking kind of thing. If you're in fifth gear in a road car, you downshift to fourth gear, we get the revs higher, yeah. and this gives you more engine braking. So we can tune that as well. It's all these things we take into account and we balance it with lap time, you know? And then obviously where it's more efficient to make longer regen phases is at higher speeds that you lose less lap time. Yeah. And then at lower speeds, you cannot make these phases so long because the loss against lap time is so big. So Steve, Antonio's just been explaining that it's a complicated balancing act, isn't it, getting this right? Yeah, you know, it really is. Um, we do an enormous amount of simulation work in order to try and understand the very best ways that we can use the regen braking in the car. But ultimately it is up to the driver exactly how they're going to use that in the car. We can't drive the car for them. Ideally you'd run max regen everywhere, but this means like it's almost as a handbrake because we only have this in the rear axle. So obviously when we're bleeding off the brakes and we're reducing pressure of the brakes on the front axle, ideally we keep the rear as high as we can just for you know performance. But sometimes what is most efficient is not drivable. Yeah. So we need to combine those two things. We need to make the car fast, we need to make the car easy to drive, and then all that will, will gain lap time at the end of the day and, and this guides you to a good result. So before the cars leave the garage, you're programming into the system the strategy for regen. But when the car's out on the track and the driver gets to the end of a straight and stamps on the brake pedal, what exactly happens for him? Does the system work automatically or does he do something manually as well? The majority of the regen that will be applied will be quite automatic because it's down to the amount he's pushing the brake pedal to slow the car. He can also, if he chooses to, add more regen with a paddle on the back of the steering wheel. There are many maps in the car so we can change how much electrical regen is going on. So the system's reacting to him pressing the pedal and how hard he's pressing the pedal. Exactly. It's crucial to absolutely maximise the amount of regen you can use because the more you can recover and use again, it's more performance. So what we all want and we all really need is a battery that can be charged harder and faster for longer because that's going to transform the way we can use regen, isn't it? Absolutely. The more we can regen, the more total energy you've got for the race. And the more energy you've got for the race, the more you can push, the more extreme manoeuvres the drivers can pull off to try and get by their rivals out there, uh, and the more entertaining the racing can be. So the benefits of an effective and efficient regenerative braking system seem pretty clear to me, but I'd still quite like to know exactly what that equates to in practice.
really interested to see exactly what it feels like when the car goes into regen mode. So here we go. Lift off the throttle. You can feel it really slowing you down. It's almost like the handbrake has been pulled on. And the car's slowing down without me even touching the brake pedal. But I can see the needle on the dash display is telling me that the system has gone into charge mode. It's actually regenerating and pumping energy back into the battery. It makes you feel nice because I know that otherwise that would be wasted energy. In a traditional road car, when you hit the brakes, the engine is still running, it's still using fuel, but that's all wasted. In this electric car, we're actually reusing it all. It's, it's just so efficient. It's undoubtedly the future. What's really exciting to think about is just how far this developing technology will push this in the future. As Andretti and the other Formula E teams refine regen braking and come up with more efficient systems, we're going to see a real revolution in the electric cars on our roads.